So just for a moment, we want to just pour into you, uh, graduates specifically, um, we want to bring you a message that will, uh, we truly believe will, will help you. Um, but this message will help all of us because uh, how many of you know, you graduates, how many, how many people have asked you recently, you know, what's your plan, right? Yeah. Well, don't be discouraged if you don't have an answer to that because, you know, you're probably 17, 18, 19 years old, somewhere in that range. And I know 68 years old, 68 year olds that don't even know what their plan is yet. So don't get discouraged. Uh, it'll come in time. But we want to talk to you today just about the importance of decisions and how important it is not to really know the plan, but more than anything else to know God's path. Right. Knowing God's path is far more important than really knowing what the plan is. And so we want to talk to you for a moment with a message that we've entitled Daily Decisions. Daily Decisions. Now, research says that every day you and I make about 35,000 decisions. Think about that. That makes me want to crawl up in the fetal position and suck my thumb. That is overwhelming. It makes me want to shut down. That's, that's, that's overwhelming. But if you, if you think about the importance of those decisions that we make every single day, just think about where you're at right now in your life. Think about where you live. Maybe if you're married, who you married, who you're dating. Think about every aspect of your life. And if you think about it, it's really a product or a result of all of the many decisions, those thousands of decisions that you've made up to this point. You are where you are. You are who you are. And you're experiencing it with the person or people you're experiencing this life with because of decisions. Decisions are crucial. Decisions will make or break your journey. Right. How many of you guys would agree by a show of hands, decisions are important, right? I'll take a hand clap too. That works too, <laughs> right? Decisions are important. Yeah. You're probably looking back right now and you're, you're, you're thinking back and you have some regrets, right? About some decisions that you made. We all do, right? right? But what's important is, God, what, what, what decisions do I need to make on a daily basis? They're going to chart my course so that I'll end up where you want me yeah. to be. I, I love Psalm 37 and 23. In fact, I've been camping out on this verse for quite a long time now, for weeks and weeks and weeks. And I just love what it says. It says in it, chapter 37, verse 23, it says, the Lord directs the steps. This is conditional of whom? The godly. The Lord directs the steps of the godly. And it says that he delights in every detail of their lives. How many of y'all have been guilty of thinking, man, God's too busy for me. He's got too much going on. Raise your hand. Come on, <laughs> raise your hand. You're like, no, God's got so much going on. He doesn't have time for me. That, that is foolishness. God is so much bigger than we could ever realize or ever imagine. And, and what's even better than that, as big as he is, what's even better than that is, man, he is like obsessed with every little detail of your life. God is infatuated with you. Don't ever let the enemy sow these seeds, these, these, these lies in your mind and convince you that God doesn't have time for you or that God is unaware of what you're going through or it doesn't matter to him. It matters. Yeah. You matter to God. And every decision that we make matters in conjunction to the course of our lives. Right. Don't make the mistake of saying, man, I'm just, I'm just waiting for God to show me what his purpose is. Because God's purpose isn't, it's, it's, it's not a, a destination. Right. We think it is. We think it's the arrival of a, of a particular point in our lives when we accomplish or achieve something specific, something really big. Right. Or we become somebody that, you know, we, we thought this is who God wants me to be. It's, it's not that destination point. Right. It's, it's today, right. right here, right now, taking the right steps that are ordered by him. How many of you guys know paths are important? Yeah, yeah. Have you ever been to the mountains before? Yep. You head up a path and you end up where you did not intend on going. Paths are, paths are important. And with every decision we make, it alters our path. Yeah. And so what we have to do is get really good at recognizing, am I on God's path or am I on the path of my plans? Right. 
Am I taking steps in the direction that I feel is best for my life, or am I taking steps that is best for what God believes is best for my life? I mean, if you will get this right now, no matter what your age, no matter where you're at in what season or situation you're in, no matter where you're at in your life, if you will get this, I'm telling you, we look back and, and we are blown away and amazed at how good God has been to us because he has ordered our steps. It's about daily surrender. This is the key right here. This is the secret sauce of it all. Your life is not your own. I know that doesn't sound exciting. Because you're like, but I want this, I want this, I want this, I want that, I want this, I want that. Man, God created you. He put desires and, and wants inside. He knows exactly what you want. He knows exactly what you desire. He put those things inside of you. And you'll see the most incredible things pan out in your life when you follow his path. Step by step by step. The steps of a righteous person are ordered, directed by God. So get in step with him. We're going to talk about that over this short time that we have together. But get in step with God. Make sure that you're on God's path. So if you're taking notes today, the title of today's message is simply that. Daily decisions. They're so important. Regardless of who you are, what age you are, decisions matter. This morning, I want to take you to a very familiar passage, one that you can quote, no doubt. One that will be on many gifts that these grads are given. One that we talk about all the time, but I want to take you to it anyway. Jeremiah 29 and 11, quote it with me. It says this, for I know the plan. Say plans. I have. Say I. Who's speaking in this, in this verse right here? Come on. Good. You're, you can preach it. God says, I have plans for you. What type of plans? These plans are good. They're not for disaster to give you a future and a hope. Now, we talked about this passage not too long ago, and we kind of helped you to understand what was going on. But for those of you who maybe you don't understand, I'm going to take you back. So this passage of Scripture is a promise, and this promise was given to the children of Israel after they had really blew it, after they had made a lot of mistakes, and actually, at this moment, they are in exile. Basically, time out, if you will, for 70 years. How many know that there are consequences for our poor decisions? Only a few of us, right? But the rest of you, you're going to figure uh, that out. Figure okay. it out. You'll figure it out. <laughs> the fact is, when we make a bad choice, a bad decision, there are consequences that follow. And so the children of Israel, they were in the middle of that consequence time. God had sent them into exile. But what he wanted them to understand, like any good godly parent would, is I still love you. And even though you made some bad decisions, I still have a plan for you. And my plan isn't to destroy you, even though you feel like right now, and some of you, maybe even in your own lives right now, have made some poor choices. And you feel like your life is a wreck. And you don't know that there's any way that God could even turn it around. But the fact is, this promise is for you as well. That God has plans that are good and not evil to give you a future and a hope. But here's what I want you to see. So often we look at this verse and we just quote the promise. We're just like, God has good plans. And you're right, he does. But those plans won't come to pass if you just try to hold on to that promise. You see... I would say that a lot of you could quote verse 11, but here's my question. Can you quote verses 12 through 14 without putting it on the screen? Most of us can't. Why? Because we know the promise, but you know, the only way you get to the promise is if you actually do what God says to do in verses 12, 13, and 14. So this morning, let's go there. Jeremiah Chapter 29, I'm going to start in verse 12, and it says this. When you call on me, when you come and you pray to me, I'll listen. When you come looking for me, you'll find me. Yes, when you get serious, say serious. When you get serious about finding me, check this out, and want it more than anything else. Do you want God more than anything else? Come on, we live in a day and a time where we watch, we watch one another chase things in this world. We chase things all over the place. God says, if you'll get serious about finding me and you want it more than anything else, check this out. He says, I'll make sure you won't be disappointed. 
It's God's decree. You see, in verses 12, 13, and 14, he lays out three things that if we're going to stay on his path, if we're going to obtain his promise and his plan for our life, there's three honestly fairly simple things that we have to do. Number one, he says, call on me. What does that look like? He's talking about having a conversation. He's talking about coming to him in prayer. And you know what he says? He says, when you come to me, I'll listen. You know, so often we say with our mouth, I really do want it. I want God's will for my life. I can't tell you how many students we talk to, not just students, but adults. And it's like, man, I want to be on God's path. I want to be in God's plan. But you know, Far too often, we spend more time talking to other people about what they think we ought to do with our life than we do on our knees asking God, what is the next step for my life? We chat with other people about it rather than just going to him because he says, if you call on me, I'll listen. Jeremiah 33 and 3 says, call to me and I will answer you. He promises that if we will call out to him, if we'll get on our knees and we'll pray, That he not only hears us, but he answers our prayers. And I would just encourage you, just a very practical thing, is that when you have your prayer time, never go into your quiet time without taking a journal or a notebook and a pen of some sort. Don't take your phone. Your phone will just go off, okay? Because here's why. The reason you take a journal and a pen is because you expect that when you talk to God, God's going to talk to you. And you say, well, he hasn't done that. Well, have you been expecting him to? Because he says he will. But we also have to stop talking. Some of us get, get, get going in our prayer time and it's like, Pfft. here's my, all the things I need you to do, God. And you're like, here's my laundry list of a big old mess I've made with my life. And I need you to answer all these prayers. And we get it all out. We pray for grandma and auntie. And we pray for all the things that are going on in our life and in our world. And then we're like, thank you, Jesus, that you hear me. Thank you that you answered. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to go on with my day. You know what was missing in that picture? You didn't stop talking. Have you ever tried to have a conversation with somebody else and they never shut up? You like try to get a word in edgewise? Don't, do not do this to your spouse, okay? Don't point. Don't do it. It's not nice. And just raise your hand. Agree with me. We all have, and it's annoying, isn't it? God wants us to stop talking so he can talk to us. The second thing he says in this passage is he says, look for me. When he says, look for me, do you know what he's talking about? He's talking about getting into his word so that we can learn who he is, what his character is. So often we're like, man, I wish God would just tell me what I'm supposed to do. Do you know that about 90% of what you're asking God is laid out right here? It's already laid out. The other 10%, when you get on your knees and you get in your word and you just begin to say, God, show me. Show me who I'm supposed to marry. Show me what house I'm supposed to buy. God, show me what school I'm supposed to go to. God, open the door. God, close the door if you don't want me to walk through it. Those details, God actually speaks. You'll feel it in your spirit and you'll be like, I know that I know that I know that I know that I'm supposed to do this. You'll have this peace come over you. Or you're praying and you're like, I really want to take that job. I really, man, the benefits are amazing. I'm going to make double the money. I really want to take that job. But there's just something inside of you. And you just get this this feeling in your gut. It's not peace. Don't take that job. That's the Holy Spirit nudging you, directing you, step by step. You see, like Brad said, so often we want to plug in our life into the GPS just like we do our destination. And we want to see the entire turn by turn, play by play for our life. And God said, hey, I'm going to give you one turn at a time. I'm not going to give you the entire thing. Why? Because you can't handle it. You'd say no and go the other direction. Because God's plans for you are so big. I love this passage of scripture in Isaiah 55 and 8. It says, my thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord. My ways are far beyond anything you can even imagine. God's plan is so much bigger than we can even imagine. But listen, we're never going to get the entire thing laid out.
played out. He wants you to get so close to him that you can hear his voice, that you can sense it inside of your heart, turn by turn by turn. And you begin to pray those prayers. God, if you don't want me to walk through that door, shut it. And when you shut it, we don't try to kick it in. Anybody ever tried to kick in a door? Come on. Brad and I have. You think we wanted to plant a church in the middle of a field? Big fat no. Did not. Tried to kick in every door for another place to be, another building to be. It didn't matter. God said, no, I won't open any of those doors. I'm going to make it clear to you what my plan is. Guys, we make it so complicated when God is saying, it's not that hard. Settle in, spend time with me, get on your face and pray. I'll cover you with my peace. And all you need to do is just wait for me to say, take that turn. Take that turn. How many of you love just watching when you're driving? You don't want to take a wrong turn because it wastes your time. Do you agree? Brad and I, last night, we were supposed to meet someone in Oklahoma City at 2 o'clock. Easy, little drive. It was get a pretty, home by, pretty good plan. It was a good plan. We were going to get back by 6 o'clock, plenty of time to be rested up for today. And plans changed. The people we were meeting were coming from Texas. They broke down in Texas like this is awesome we're like we're going to texas so we can't take a detour on to texas we rolled in an hour and a half before our alarm goes off to get up this morning but last night as we were driving and we were thinking about this message and we were going over it and trying really hard not to complain right and we didn't so i kept my mouth full of pretzels the he entire didn't eat the time. whole time it's like i am not gonna complain we literally told ourselves, you know, the family we were meeting, they didn't know Jesus. And they're the ones that had a breakdown and we were able to witness to them. And yeah, did it take us hours out of our way? We were able to pray with them, witness to them, share our services with them. And we were like, who knows what God's going to do? So what if we drove all night? Maybe they're going to receive Jesus. I don't know. But you know, coming home, I had the GPS on my phone and turn by turn. I mean, I'm staring at it. When it got down to five miles, I mean, I'm watching it. Why? Because I do not want to waste time with a wrong turn. Guys, some of us need to get that serious about our life. Staring into the word of God, being on our knees every single morning saying, God, I don't want to take, I don't want to take a wrong turn. I don't want to waste time. I don't want to make those bad decisions. But you know what it really takes? And it's the final thing that you see in this verse. It takes getting serious about going after God. Not just lip service, not just saying, I want to know God's plan for my life. Not just saying, hey, make it easy. You know what? How many times do we hear people say, I want to be healthy? How many times do we hear people say, like, I want to get fit or I want to get my finances. I would love to be out of debt. But we don't do the hard things to get to that place. How many times do we hear people say, you know what? I really, I need to surround myself with better friends because I really want to get in the right place with God. And yet we don't do that. We keep going out on Friday night and going out on Saturday night with the people who are dragging us down. Listen to me. We have to get serious about going after God if you want to be on his path and his plan and his purpose. And it doesn't make, it's really not that complicated. Here's what it takes. Every single day predetermining, I'm going to call out to you, Lord. I'm going to look for you. I'm going to search for you, God, with all of my heart in your word. And I'm going to be serious every day. Every day I'm going to be serious because you know what will happen? You will just naturally turn by turn by turn. God says, go here, you go there. That's not what that was. not even what I thought. And yet you end up someplace just like last night. No intention to go to Texas, but we went to Texas. Why? That's where God had us to go. God has a plan and God has a purpose. The question is, are you serious about aligning your life with it? Some of you are saying, God, what's, what's next? And God's saying, I'm not going to tell you what's next and tell you what to do what I told you to do right now. I'm not going to tell you what's next. You're not, even being beetle, you're not even being obedient right now. It's like my kids. If I ask my kids to do something, hey, dude, clean up your room. Take out the trash. Go mow the lawn. If they don't do the first thing, why the heck would I bless them with something? 
I wouldn't. You wouldn't. God's saying, I'm not going to tell you what's next. Be obedient with what I said right now. Some of you know exactly what God has told you to do. And some of you know God's told you to stop doing some things so that you can have what's next. Are you serious about it? The problem, if we're going to be honest with ourselves, is we don't trust him. I mean, is, let's, can we just boil it down? Isn't that really the issue? We're control freaks. That's the issue. But what could, what could be? What are the possibilities if there would be a transference of control? Yeah. What if, hypothetically speaking, what if we were to have faith and say, God, okay, I'm going to give this to you. I'm going to let you lead the way on the map. I'm going to let you take me turn by turn. I'm going to trust you. I'm not going to look ahead. I'm not going to get caught up in the what will be or what could be or what's coming down the road. I'm going to just trust you for a while. What are the possibilities? You know, I was born a, a, a dreamer. I'm, I am a dreamer. I spent most of my grade school years dreaming. And my teachers had a problem with that. For whatever reason, I don't know why. <laughs> but they didn't like it. And I would, I would think so far ahead and create these possible realities for my life. That's a good quality to begin with the end in mind. But as I've come to Christ and I've matured in my relationship with God, I've learned some things. And it's not that you can't dream. It's that you just have to take a step back and say, okay, like you've told me some things, you've shown me some things about the future, but it's that in-between part that Misty was talking about. I, I really don't know what that looks like. And it's kind of freaking me out. But if you'll, if you'll trust him by the day, yeah. by the step, yeah. I'm telling you before you realize that you'll look back on your life and you'll say, I cannot believe what the Lord has done with my life. Right. Step by step by step. I could have never imagined. I'm a dreamer. I could have never dreamed this. I, I could have never in a thousand years dreamed what God would do in the middle of a pasture in Northeast Oklahoma. This is his dream. But don't miss it. Hold on. Don't, don't, don't miss it. Don't miss it. We don't, we don't trust him. We don't trust him. The moment you begin to trust him and that transference of control and power happens and you say, God, this is it. This is the secret sauce. Are you taking notes? Not my life, but yours. This is not my life. This is yours. You have been bought. You have been purchased with the blood of Jesus Christ. You belong to Jesus. You know, in football, how many of you guys... Dudes, how many of you played uh, football in high school? And, and this is vintage football stuff. And we had the shirt. It said property of. Remember that? Remember that? We all have that shirt. And we're property of Jesus. He, he paid for us on the cross. And when you said yes to Jesus, hear me. This is the most beautiful, most freeing thing ever. When you said yes to him, your life became brand new. And he said, all right. It's time to begin. Yeah. But some of you, even after you came to Christ, you've been spending so much time trying to veer off on a path called your plans. Stop. Yeah. Stop it. Okay. He has so much more for you, but you have to start back here and say, all right, Lord, today, today, right. daily decisions. Today, before I get out of bed, I'm you can get on you version and I'm, I'm gonna read the word. Yeah. Before I, my feet hit the floor, I'm going to put you first. 
at the top of my day, God, I'm going to spend time in, in, in prayer and I'm going to talk to you and I'm going to be quiet and I'm going to listen to you and I'm going to spend time in worship and I'm going to make sure my, my family's in church and I'm going to be connected in life groups and I'm going to be volunteering uh, and I'm going to be serving. I'm going to be giving and investing in the kingdom of God and I'm going to be sharing my faith on social media and, and at work and at school and, and you're just de- daily, daily, daily just taking these steps and just, God, I want to please you here and I want to please you there. I want to please you here. I want to please you there. It's when you're on your phone, it's choosing to click this or not click that or swipe or don't swipe. It's, it's, it's in every single decision that you make. That is God's purpose. Stop thinking it's this big, huge thing. It is, but you're not going to get there unless you do the daily, the daily little right decisions. He blesses and directs the steps of those who are right with him. Get right with him and he's going to bless your steps and he's going to bless your path. Give him praise today. Come on. God's worthy. There's so much there, guys. I hope you get it. I hope you get it. I hope you get it. Let me pray for you today. Father, in the powerful name of Jesus, we are so incredibly grateful that you have given each and every one of us a a purpose and a path. You have plans for us and they are good. But I pray that we would be cognizant. We would have enough wherewithal to see that there has to be a transference of control, to see God, that that you guide our steps and it's, it's your path. Help us every day in the daily decisions to do what's right to position ourselves around the right people, go to the right places and do the right things according to your word, knowing God that you will direct each and every one of our steps, that our lives would please you and that Jesus, I pray that you would be glorified through our lives, that people would look at our lives and say that that there's only one explanation. That's only because of Jesus, only because of Jesus is that possible. Let us get it today, God, truly. Let us walk your path with our daily decisions. Bless these graduates, we pray. Father God, please help them to learn to obey you and to please you in everything. Guide their steps and may your purpose come to pass in their lives. With heads bowed and eyes closed, the the best decision out of the 35,000 decisions that you could make today would be the decision to make Jesus the Lord of your life and invite him to to have control in your heart. Then you might say, how do I know if I'm saved? Do you have a real and life-changing relationship with Jesus that's contagious? I didn't ask if you had a, a, a fake understanding of religion. I'm asking if you have a real relationship with the Son of God? And is it so incredible that your life has changed and people see the change? Your family sees the change and your life is so attractive because of the change that people want the Jesus that's inside of you. That's when you know you're saved. There's fruit. There's evidence. If you'd say to yourself today, I'm not saved. There's nothing greater than to become a citizen of heaven, to to become an adopted son or a daughter of the Most High God, to transfer control and say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Take control of my life. You can do that right now by asking God to forgive you of your sins. We're all sinners. We've trespassed against God. And he is waiting to forgive you. If you'll just say, God, I admit it. I'm a sinner. I'm sorry please forgive me. If you believe with all of your heart that Jesus really is the son of God, believing in him and confessing him to be Lord of your life and giving him control from this moment forward, you can be saved. So if you're watching online and you're making that decision today, I encourage you to comment below all in. If you're in this room, we're going to pray a prayer as a church family. I just want to encourage you right now to just raise your hand so I know who I'm praying with today. No one else is looking around. If that's you, just raise your hand and say, I want to know Jesus. Amen. I see your hand on my right. Anybody else? I see your hand up front. 
in the middle. I see your hand on my left, up in the middle, four people giving their lives to Jesus. Anyone else today? You say, I want to know Jesus in a real way. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on. Anybody else? Thank you. Five. I see your hand in the bleachers. Anyone else? Thank you, Father. Anyone else today? Lord, we love you. Thank you. Six. Amen. Thank you, God. Six people changing their eternal address. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. We're going to pray with you. Those of you who courageously raised your hand, we're going to pray with you right now as a church family. Let's pray this prayer. Father, forgive me of my sins. Jesus is the Son of God. It's only through Him I can be saved. I confess today Jesus Christ to be Lord and Savior of my life. I choose you. Help me in every decision to do what's right, to walk your path and live your purpose. In Jesus' name, everyone said. Amen. Church, put your hands together for the six of those who just gave their lives to Jesus today. Woo!